Oh, it is a pleasure to be here this evening um, to have Aaron Bishop here at, to be a part of this um, YSU alumni lecture ser um, series that we're doing. And today we're going to be talking about public health, the global pandemic, as well as looking at what's going to be happening in the future. And so I have my phone, so if you have any questions, please feel free to post that. We'll be um, trying to make sure that we answer your questions before, um, throughout our conversation today. Um, so let's, let's get into this. So Aaron, as an, as an alumni of YSU, you've graduated in 01 and 07 and with a bachelor's degree of science and applied science degree, mm -hmm. as well as a master's in public health. Can you give us a little bit about, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, how you came about choosing a degree of public health? Yeah, sure. Well, I can start off by, I was born and raised in Youngstown. Um, been here my whole life, 43 years. I've been a, um, a resident of the city. And um, I went to Ursuline High School, so right down the road here. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of always, I was gonna plan on going to YSU. Uh, my mom didn't go right out of college, or right out of high school, and came back later. And so she was coming here. My dad did come here for a little bit. Um, and then my, uh, a lot of my uncles and aunts did go to YSU. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I guess I always thought I would be at the university, and um, so when it was time to graduate, and I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. So the very first thing I tried was physical therapy. Loved the classes, just didn't do very well in like the chemistries and the mm. physics, so I'm like, now what? So then I went to teaching, and then I liked that, but there was something missing, so then I moved to social work. And then I loved social work. I loved the classes, I loved the professors. Uh, but there was, I was just sad sometimes during the classes. I thought, I don't know if I could handle doing this the rest of my life, but mm -hmm. I loved helping people. So in the meantime, I was uh, working for the Ursuline Sisters in their HIV AIDS ministry, mm -hmm. and um, just watching with the kids that were either affected or infected with HIV and AIDS. And I met a, a gentleman who was working there too, and I said, oh, he said, I, went to YSU. I go to YSU. I said, what's your major? And he said, it's community health. And I'm like, oh, I never heard of that. Tell me a little bit more about community health. And he kind of was explaining it, and you could do like work site wellness, and you could, you know, help and do this. Or I'm like, oh, that, that just sounds like something that I may, maybe I'll find my major now. So I ended up going to see Dr. Kathy Ackbaum, who at the time was in charge of the public health program, like you are now. And um, that day changed my life. I kind of went in her office. I remember it was right down there in Kushwa. Went in and said, you know, I just want to graduate. I want to find my, what I need to do with my life. And she's like, here. She, for, I had two, two more years left. She just kind of marched out everything. This is what you're gonna do. I took like a ton of classes. You're gonna take this, this, and then you're gonna join Ada Sigma Gamma, the, and then you're going to graduate, and then you're gonna get in the MPH program. I was like, oh, wow. You know, I went from, I don't know what I would do with my life to I was getting a master's degree, right? Right. So I uh, started to take the classes in community health, and I was like, this is great. And what I did like about it at the time, there was not a lot of people, so I'd have a class with like three other you know, students, and we just had a real good camaraderie. Dr. Akpom was, you know, always be someone that I always looked up to, and I always say she really did change my life, and public health, you know, was something I really ended up falling in love with. So um, while I was uh, in undergrad, my very first job was at the Community Health Center, which is right up on Wick Avenue. Again, mm -hmm. I'm like, Ursuline, why is you back to Wick Avenue? Mm -hmm. And I was a health educator there. So mm -hmm. that, that was kind of cool, because this is National Public Health Week, and I, or Health Education Week, and some health educators I know that are out there today watching this, some of my old um, you know, classmates here at the university are probably watching, and congratulations. I know being in health, uh, public health right now is not easy, so um, I commend you all. And um, so moving on, you know, did that, um, worked at the health center, loved it, uh, was a patient educator and helped people with diabetes. I remember that year, I, one time I got to meet the President Bush came to talk to us about community health um, center. So it was a really good experience, you know. And um, I ended up, I was, got married and I had my first child and it was kind of hard just to work full time. So I decided I worked, started to work part time and um, went into working for Catholic Charities. 
uh, regional agency, and I was working with the homeless program, and it was called the Hope Program. And what I did was wait, wait, wait. Oh, before you get into see, that, I know, because I, 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 I can see you. You're going to tell the whole story, but I want to say that yeah. because while you were doing the public health work, mm -hmm. I was. It made me think of this whole idea about how would what does public health mean to you? Yeah. Now since you've kind of had this experience, you know, three. 365 about right. you know all these things that are happening now. So I'm just curious to see, and I'm sure our audience would love to know, what, what does public health mean to you? So public health to me means like everything. It encompasses everything. And I remember for so long, before the pandemic, people would say, well, like, what is public health? Yeah. So you have your master's in public health, what does yeah. that mean? Absolutely. And I'd be like, well, you know, like I could work at a health department or, you know, when you think of like diseases or infectious disease or, you know, when you go to the, the restaurants and they, uh, inspect that's that's like public health you know that was the, yes. uh, the big thing right. and now like I can't turn on the news and not hear public health like thousand times you know during a thing and finally my kids get what I do and my right. husband gets it and you know my whole family's like oh that's public health so finally you know like we've made our way in the world as public health people and so I just think it just encompasses the whole person from you know the beginning of life till the end of life and how um, you know we function through society and how we can I always look at it in public health as we just want to keep them safe from you know um, from the minute they're born until until they die, and that's really what we do in public health is just follow people along their entire um, you know lifespan. So you bring up this really good point, you know, as you mentioned, this is National Health Education Week, and you talked about your experiences, one of your first jobs was being a health educator, and I know many of our um, alumni or our students, current students, are always wondering, like, you know, how are they now that they've picked public health, or I should say, <laughs> discovered public health, right? Yeah. They've discovered it's public a discovery. health in one way or another, right? We all have similar stories. You know, we didn't quite know what public health, right. and now more people kind of have an idea about mm -hmm. what public health is. I, I, I jokingly say, just a small idea about what public <laughs> health, because it's so much more than what has you know been talk, mm -hmm. talked about recently. Um, but you were you were kind of going into this whole idea about. Um, work you were doing before you started working at the Youngstown City Health District mm -hmm. and about some of those um, previous projects um, and I think you said something about like homelessness. Yeah. Can you talk about some of that experience sure. and it, that yep. passion that you had? How did you sure. find that? So when I was working at Catholic Charities, uh, they had this HOPE program and we would help women um, to try to get back on their feet. I would go to like the Beatitude House or the YWCA. Um, uh, the rescue mission and I would work with women and try to teach them about like what happens when we get back out there you know and trying to get them to save money so that when they come out they could put a help you know down payment on an apartment or a house so mm -hmm. um, and as I was there um, Nancy Voidis who um, is the executive director there uh, was my boss and uh, she was telling me about this continuum of care and so I got kind of active with that and the, all the different people in the city of Youngstown and Mahoning County just really working together um, to, to work with the homeless. And um, while I was there, they were talking about the National Alliance to End Homelessness and they had this 10 year plan. So Mahoning County didn't have one at the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, that makes sense. And at the time I had no idea what I was gonna do for my um, capstone okay. for public health. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, this makes sense. I could do the 10 year plan to end homelessness and how I can bring why homelessness is a public health problem. Mm -hmm. And I kind of merged that all together. And so I did the 10 year plan to end homelessness it was 2007 to 2017. So um, it was just a strategic plan of how we in Mahoney County were going to, to end homelessness. So that really, again, you know, your path kind of moves. Mm -hmm. And so I'll, I'll never forget. I, um, finished the plan and then I graduated that year and I was asked um, to be the student speaker at the YSU. So when I graduated uh, from YSU with my master's degree, I you know, presented to the class or you know, to the graduates. So it was mm -hmm. pretty cool. And it was uh, President Trestle's last year here as the coach because he was moving to Ohio State. And so I got to, he was there that day and I'll just never forget. So it kind of, it, it goes around. And you know, I didn't, and I wanted to touch a little bit, you know, as I moved to public health, but YSU, you know, as I was a student here, was just, it had so many opportunities for me, you know, and staying home, I wanted to, like, I, I was a homebody, I loved Youngstown, I didn't really want to leave, my parents were here, my grandmas were here, so, you know, I chose to come here, um, but I got real involved, I joined a sorority, I lived in a sorority house, we lived off campus, so I really embraced 
what Y issue is. And then with public health, I got involved in Ada Sigma Gamma, which was like our um, health education mm -hmm. fraternity. And so I was the president of that, and we would do um, service projects. And we had, I remember we had a really nice um, initiation ceremony, it was over at the Newman Center. And um, we just did a lot of nice things for public health. So I remember too, like Dr. Akpom saying to me, what do you want to do? You could be you know, do you want to go into pregnancy prevention? Do you want to go into drugs, alcohol? And I was still, like I said, I had no idea what I wanted to do. So fast forward ahead, I'm at working at Catholic Charities and I was asked to uh, join the Board of Health. You know, mm -hmm. being a, a member, having a public health background, living in the city, they mm -hmm. needed a, a board member. So I was happy to do it. And I kind of brought that YSU connection and then things happened. Jay Williams at the time was our mayor and um it was kind of like this job appeared out of nowhere like my dream job when i tell you i'm not lying that <laughs> i used to tell people like my dream job would be to be in the city youngstown my city and be the health commissioner like that was just my dream and so to tell you that i'm living my dream i truly am living my dream in my hometown um working all the time with the university that i love so much and so um you know just being able to to do what i love in the city I love, and I, I always talk about that because I, I truly mean that. And I think you bring up a really good point when you're talking about, you know, this is, you know, your community. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're invested in the community, you're involved in the community, and I know that you're, as being the health commissioner, you're, in, you're invited to be on a number of different committees yeah. and, and coalitions to, to, to have a voice, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important when we're talking about what's happening today um, in today's society, particularly with the pandemic. So mm -hmm. I want to transition a little bit, sure. talk, thinking about like the early days of the pandemic mm -hmm. and, you know, were you concerned, what, were there any concerns as yeah. it relates to COVID-19 and about how, um, what was happening in the U.S. and how it might be spreading? So just talk about early on how yeah. that started and then how it transitioned throughout, mm -hmm. you know, the last couple of months, because this is, this is our war, right? right? And this is public health and there's lots of changes and I'd I love to get your perspective on that. Sure. So again, I always feel like I have a story, but, <laughs> so I do have a story for this one. Okay. And so we were very busy in becoming accredited. So mm. health departments had to be accredited by 2020. So, you know, we were kind of like really working on it. I mean, nonstop, we mm -hmm. had to do so much. For, I'm sure anyone that does accreditation right. in anything is a long process. Right. So we were trying to be public health accredited. Uh, we had our site visit, right? So we, it was two full days, just like exhausting days. Yes. And I'm hearing little talks about it. And one of the uh, women that was coming to do it, she actually is one of the health commissioners for the city or for Oklahoma. So like she's been on CNN. I'm like, she was one of our, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we were just like, just, we didn't really think about it because we were just so engrossed in this, gotta get this accreditation. accreditation. Like right. it was just so much riding on it, right? So the next day we get summoned to Columbus and they're like, there's this, you know, something's going on and there's, I've heard about it, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, they're like, we got it, we're gonna talk about it. So we go down, and myself and Tara Chofi, who is my colleague, our director of environmental health, her and I, I'll never forget, we're driving down to Columbus and we're like, oh my God, life is gonna change. It's gonna be awesome. Like, we're just gonna have this, <sighs> everything's behind us. We can relax. Like we just right. like how these plans, you know? Right, right. So we get there and I remember we walk in and it's packed and I'm like, and she says to me like, I thought there's like, they don't want everyone packed in a building. Like we're all here and we're standing room only. And they start talking about, you know, COVID-19 and no one really knows. And that was the day that the Arnold Schwarzenegger was canceled. So like mm -hmm. the governor DeWine kept coming in and leaving and then um, there had been one outbreak at uh, Miami University. So they kind of told their story. And then um, the Surgeon General came and he did a little presentation. So he was like Skyped in mm -hmm. and, you know, cause you're starting to get a little worried, like this is like some serious thing going on here. So Tara and I are just kind of like, we had lunch and we're like, okay. And then after lunch, we did like a little group project and we were kind of all put our, and what, if hap what happens if we have like a, a pandemic and what will happen if this and what if we have to do max vaccination and what if we have to shut down schools I'm like okay is this for real you know I remember learning about the Spanish flu um, in public health uh, and from 1918 and so I'm like and we would always do and that's what's so weird about public health is we would always do these little fake what happens if that and mm -hmm. so I mean you go to them and like half the time they're like a whole day and you're just like oh, okay I'm just 
this ain't gonna happen. So, right. but you're learning, you're listening, just in case. Right. So everyone's like, oh, we gotta do this. And I remember everyone's big thing was, what are we gonna do about accreditation? Because everyone was like in that mode too. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, we just finished ours. And uh, so on the way back home, we're like, oh, this is kind of, okay, what do we gotta do? And the first thing we did the whole ride home was like, we gotta get this person on board, we gotta talk to them, okay. Let's kind of get a plan here. Mm -hmm. So the following week, I was asked to go and speak to the Rotary, Youngstown Rotary. And I was speaking about COVID-19. I mean, I just did a quick PowerPoint. One of, our, one of my wife's uh, interns, uh, Gabby, she helped me do it. And um, we were, you know, just kind of learning about it. And I went and I presented. And as I was presenting, Scott Chulik, who's a, a YSU grad, raised his hand. And he said, Aaron, I just want you to know, like we were, I was talking about, it's always changing, you know, like we're learning. He said, while you were standing there, I just got a, a text saying that, it's a, you know, the WHO, uh, World Health Organization, named this uh, pandemic. And I was like, what? And at that moment, it was at the YMCA, I'll never forget, it was like, my life changed. And I got a text from Mayor uh, Tito Brown, my boss, and said, hey, Aaron, we're gonna watch, the governor's coming on, we're gonna go to your, your health, um, the health department and watch it on the big screen, and we're gonna, mm -hmm. you know, go from there. And that was when they said, it's, it's here in Ohio now, what, you know, this is a pandemic, what are we gonna do? And from that point on, uh, we, you know, caught our, we called our COVID-19 task force. Um, it was my su supervisors at the health department, our director of nursing, our director of minority health, our director of environmental health, you know, vital statistics. We get all them on board. And then also the mayor, uh, our law director, our code enforcement, our park director, and um, planning and zoning, I mean, like just so, it wasn't going to be just a health department thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what was so important um, for us is like how the mayor saw the importance of a health department. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the day before or the week before he was at our fab and how like they really talked about it. And he's like realized like, yeah, this is a good thing to have a local health department because mm -hmm. there's only 113 in the state and most all counties have one. So there's only certain, you know, so many that have city health departments. Mm -hmm. And so, um, from that point on, we just were like, okay, we're gonna do this. These are our residents, mm -hmm. and this isn't gonna be just a health department thing. And so um, I went from, you know, meeting with the staff, uh, the mayor's staff, like, you know, once every other week we meet, you know, for two hour meeting. Now it was like a daily meeting. <laughs> and at that time we were meeting in the same room because we didn't know that you, you couldn't, you know, wear masks or you had a social distance, you mm -hmm. know? So we just started every day and what we were gonna do. And that's when things started happening. Like we got to shut this down. Mm -hmm. and, you know, things were starting to shut down, and everything was just happening really fast. Mm -hmm. And we would just learn things from the governor. Like we'd have a little heads up, you know, maybe an hour before because we were talking to other health commissioners. The mayor was on with other mayors. Um, our Nikki Posterly, she's uh, was on with other chief of staff. So we were, we had a little bit of a heads up, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So. It was just seemed like every new hour we had something else that we had to tackle. So, you know, it wasn't easy closing down places and, mm -hmm. you know, you were worried. I have friends that own businesses. I have friends that work in the restaurant industry, you know, and they would be calling me like, Aaron, do you think it's going to happen? And I'd say, I think it is. I'm sorry. You know, like I just felt bad, mm -hmm. uh, but it is what it, it, you know, it is what it was. And you would see what the, the governor would kind of do, what was going on in the state of Ohio. And then, you know, we started to shut down things. We started to shut down City Hall and the different buildings and the restaurants started to shut down, the schools. And, you know, as a mother of a, I had an eighth grader and a sophomore and, you know, and it, it was scary because we didn't know what was going on, you know. I didn't know. This was the first time my friends that are physicians, they didn't, I mean, you know, like we were all kind of learning it. Uh, we'd be put together and my, very dear friend, Dr. James Kravick. He works for Mercy Health. He was, him and I were like going to these big meetings and I looked at him one point, cause we were like friends since we were in kindergarten. I'm like, now it's all on us. Like right, right, <laughs> who right. would have thought, you know, <laughs> when we were in kindergarten now we're like the whole world is watching us and what we're gonna do right. as the hospital, as the health department. Um, we had Tim Ryan was involved. Uh, we just like, I just feel like our community just came together and uh, what are we gonna do to keep us safe, you know? So that kind of, you kind of alluded to some of the daily activities mm -hmm. that you were doing and, and how you had to bring community partners together to kind yeah. of, you know, help address, you know, the pandemic that was before us, right? Yeah. And so, and you kind of, you, you talked about the whole niche notion that, um, you know, unfortunately, like, the world shut down yeah. in some phase or another, sure. right? And, and particularly Youngstown and, and, and how that affected 
families and communities. Mm -hmm. And so as during the shutdown, you know, what kind of daily activities were you doing to um, were you responsible or, you know, who were you working with during right. those times? So a lot of the, so United Way stepped up, Bob mm -hmm. Hannon and his group, um, and just with food. Mm -hmm. um, we also, you know, with our school shutting down, mm -hmm. the city schools, right. um, you know, with, uh, Mr. Jennings saying, hey, we need to still feed, feed our kids. I mean, right. they, they rely on breakfast and, and lunch every single day. Right. Okay, so no school, what, what did that mean? So it meant that as the health department and as the city workers, you know, while everyone else was kind of hunkering down, you know, we had to be out there and, mm -hmm. and doing that. And I, I'll just never forget. So every Monday we would go to the schools and I, I mean, I worked at Kirkmere every single Monday for months and we would just, the, the families would come up and you could just see sometimes like the, they were scared, you know, they all had their masks on and they, you know, would open the trunk and it just, this like, it was just a scary feeling, you know what I mean? Because no one really knew what was going on, and but they were out there because they needed their food, and so that you know I saw where our, our community again stepped up and, and did that. Um, and then it was also then kind of fast forward, we were working with people that needed masks, and so mm -hmm. then we the mask issue came up, and now okay, we're going to mandate masks, but what if people don't have them? So then we went to all the businesses. We spent two days. Um, our environmental health uh, staff is wonderful. You know, like I said, under Tara Trophy, they just, we were out, you know, on the streets going to the different um, mini marts, restaurants that were open, that, mm -hmm. some that were the supermarkets. I remember going to like tire shops. I'm just like, hey, listen, if someone walks in here and doesn't have a mask on, you can give them one, you know? And so they really appreciated that. Um, and I think that did help. Um, and we also just, any complaints. I mean, there were people, we worked with businesses. Right. Our environmental health just worked with, how are we gonna keep our employees safe? And I will say, I really saw just business uh, people step up and just say, we wanna protect our, you know, our workers. This is mm -hmm. so important. I mean, I look at YSU, um, you know, they, they obviously shut down, but I, just being here today and just going into the restroom, I mean, there's just things about getting COVID-19 tested. There's mm -hmm. just, YSU got is perfect. You know, when I look at, they talk about protecting your, you know, your staff and your employees and your students. I mean, so, I just saw the community and sometimes like with public health, we don't work with businesses as well. I feel mm -hmm. like whenever we're on coalitions, we're always trying to get business to come and mm -hmm. join us and it's hard. Uh, but this is the one where we really work together with mm -hmm. our businesses. And like I said, especially in the city, what it is with our health department, it is unique that we just focus on the city mm -hmm. and our county health department is wonderful. It's run by uh, another YSU graduate. <laughs> Masters of Public Yeah, health. MPH as well, Ryan T. Cack, who, Again, grew up with him uh, on the west side of Youngstown, and now him and I are working together uh, yes. to in this pandemic, both grads at U.S. Ursuline and then YSU. So, um, you know, we just kind of are like, okay, we got to do this, and they do a one outstanding job. And it's kind of nice because, like today, I had a complaint there was a party going on in Camel, so like I'll call Ryan, hey Ryan, can you, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. or he'll call me. I think this bar is on South Avenue this year, so mm -hmm. we just kind of help each other out and. Um, but they have, a, they have a huge staff and their staff just like ours out and about doing everything to keep their, the people of Mahoning County protected. But we, they kind of get a little break in the city because we're here to pick up, you right. know, for the city residents. So, so you kind of, you've alluded to this and you, I think you, you, you demonstrated the importance of partnership yeah. and, and everybody working together. And although we may have uh, different goals and objectives, but if we can come together with a sin, single agenda mm -hmm. things can get done right and so when we if you listen to the news you hear the speculations the COVID-19 positive tests are going up mm -hmm. there seems to be a spike that we may be looking for this may be our second or third wave right and so you know with this uncertainty of what may happen as we're in the flu season mm -hmm. people are now the weather is beginning to change it's nice today but <laughs> it's beautiful you know, it may not <laughs> stay that way for much longer yeah. you know as the season begins to change and people are more indoors um, and we're facing that uncertainty, mm -hmm. can, you, can, you, can you give us something about what to look forward to when we're talking about the future in the next couple of months, yeah. um, what you anticipate might, you know, could happen or need to happen um, in that regards to COVID-19? Yeah, so today, you know, really I was focusing, I talked on the morning show in the morning, I did Facebook Live with the mayor, I just got off the phone or before I came here with, uh, I meet every other Thursday with our clergy um, in the city of Youngstown and um, the surrounding areas 
to talk to them about what we can do. So, mm -hmm. um, and I talked to them. So I feel like, I've, and I also was on 27 today. So I, I've been talking about this all day today. So <laughs> I'll just continue on what I've been talking about. So we're really worrying about the, the holidays are coming up. Mm -hmm. All are, you know, I, I think of the end of the year every year. Like I, lo I just love that time of year. We just celebrate what has happened. 2020 is a hard year to celebrate, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we want to do that. Um, let's start with Halloween's coming up, right? So mm -hmm. one thing that we did in the city of Youngstown was early, about a month and a half ago, we kind of got together. And as soon as the guidelines came out from the CDC and the Ohio Department of Health, and they were leaving it up to the local health departments, mm -hmm. You know, we talked with our Parks and Rec because uh, Don Turnage has always done a little um, program with them and they did it with Park. And then we talked with uh, Nikki Poshley who does out downtown events and the mayor and, you know, Chief Lees and Chief Finley. They were like, you know, we need to do something. What should we do? And we came up with, let's do, because it was considered moderate to low risk, to do like a drive through event. Mm -hmm. So then Don came up with Booyah. That's the name of our um, big event on, on Halloween, which is nice. So okay. it's 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. It's at Cavelli Center. Okay. And what they'll do is families will come. They can dress up. They're going to stay in their car, which is important. Stay in their car. They can open their trunks. They can leave their trunk up in the whole time. We'll throw in the candy or whatever. We're making packets prepackaged, um, you know, for them. And then we'll have like masks and everything else. We're going to do like they could decorate their car. We'll have giveaways. We'll have, you know, costume car decorating, you know, so we're trying to make it fun for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then we have about 30 organizations that are going to be socially distanced, like every, I think we're doing every third parking mm -hmm. space. So, I mean, we're, we're on it. Anything that we do in the city, it has to have like my approval, you know, not that I'm like, <laughs> but like between me and Tara, we have to make sure everything's done. Right. The mayor is always like, is health department okay with it? If they're not, I'm not. So right. it, just because this time we, we have to do the COVID. So did this, um, we're excited about that. Now other communities are doing some, are having trick or treat, like your mm -hmm. normal trick or treat. Our thing too, we were, a lot of our residents were already calling us like, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of afraid. I haven't been out of my house, you know, since March. I don't know about opening the doors and, mm -hmm. and I'm so used to just leaving out a basket of candy. Well, that's, we don't want that. So we're like, okay, let's just make it easier. And we haven't gotten a lot of complaints, you know, I'm sure okay. people are, you know, but it seems like everyone's okay with it. But for communities that are doing it, I think they're doing a great job, but there's just things that you have to realize that you need to make sure that when you're doing trick or treat, you're staying separated. I know when my kids we used to go, they were like huddled together, and it was like the whole crew, you know, having mm -hmm. a good time. Just got to be careful with that. I I look at, you know, you could wear your mask, but kind of incorporate that into your mm -hmm. actual, you know, costume because you don't want to have two masks on. It'll get a little hard to breathe. So we're trying to tell kids that. Uh, and then for people that are passing out, you know, we're saying to be outside, kind of greet them, sit on the porch, sit in front of your garage, and then not to have that community, you know, that was always like fun. The kids always, like, oh, they just let you take whatever, you know. And I was always one for that because we would always be trick-or-treating. I'd leave a basket and, mm -hmm. and go with my kids or whatever. So, you know, we're telling people not to do that, kind of prepackaged stuff. Uh, if you have more than one thing you're handing out, so put in a baggie. And I think it'll be okay, you know, uh, just as everyone follows those rules. Uh, but what we worry about the most, I think, is the the parties and the getting togethers because what we're seeing now and you know we're red and a lot of people are worried there's rumors were flying that we were going to turn purple today we aren't um, but we're at higher risk you know and uh, a lot of this we're seeing pop up is you know family gatherings larger gatherings um, I'll just I was doing a couple um, examples today a woman who wasn't feeling very well went and got tested for COVID-19 while she was waiting her results through a baby shower at her home, people went to the baby shower and like, ha you know, people mm -hmm. were getting sick there. So we tell people when they come and get tested, like you have to quarantine. Like if you're waiting for a result for a test, you need to stay put. So where can people go if they want to get tested for COVID-19? Yeah, so right now we're doing testing every Thursday. Okay, every Thursday. We are doing it through the health department, the governor's office and the Ohio National Guard. Okay. And so we have them all over the city of Youngstown. We try to go to a different side of town every day. Today we were on the east side at the Spanish Evangelical Church. We did have a little over 120 people there today. Mm -hmm. So it was a great turnout. We also are doing flu shots. Uh, the flu shots are $25 or free if you have an insurance card. And we had a lot of people do flu shots today. Usually people are like afraid of needles, but I'd rather be more afraid to get that COVID test. <laughs> I'm like, but we had a lot of people do flu shots today. So that was okay. good. I was very happy with that. And it's nice. We have YSU students, nursing students mm -hmm. that come and do that. So they're, they're teaching how to, you know, give the flu shot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
we like that partnership with Dr. Wagner and, and her uh, nursing students. So we've been doing that every Thursday. And then there's all kind of places around town, Mercy Health, Quick Med, uh, 910 Rapid Care, they do the rapid test. I get tons of people that, I need a test tomorrow, like they want right. the results back. So there's places um, that can do those rapid tests. Uh, so we, we have a list that we always tell people, you know, but we always say, hey, we have one here if you don't want to worry the drive-through. Mm -hmm. uh, so we always let them know about our testing. So where can it go for next Thursday? So this, this yeah. week is over. So next week, if they're ready to try to get ready, they want to participate in your every Thursday, where is the location for next Thursday? So next week's very close here. It is on uh, Wick Avenue at St. John's Episcopal Church. Okay, so great. Reverend Gale's Church. So it's nice. And if we have students at YSU, we always are encouraging them to come out. Mm -hmm. um, they could just walk right over. So, so you talked a little bit about... Um, how you connected with YSU still, yeah. even though yeah. you've graduated, you're still connected with YSU. Can you describe a little bit more about um, other things that you're doing as it relates to COVID or other things that the health department is doing that connects back to YSU? Sure. Well, first off, um, I did teach at YSU from when I, right when I graduated, from, so I was 01 till 2012. Oh. So that was a long time. I did some undergrad classes. I always taught intro to healthy lifestyles, which I love. I, I really miss teaching. But I like the one-on-one, -on -one. I like being in the classroom as opposed to online, because I just like really getting to know the students. I, I can't tell you, I can't go anywhere without someone, oh, you were my YSU teacher. <laughs> right. So my cousin's like, how do you you teach? I'm like, a lot when you taught that intro class. <laughs> right. um, so I do miss that, I, I love that. But you know, as a mom, I kind of wanted to be home and you know, with the kids at night and football games and baseball games and all that. So I think I would go back probably once the kids are, prob they'll be here in a couple years, hard to believe. So <laughs> I, know, I can't believe it. The family but, tradition continues. <laughs> yeah. We love to yeah, hear that. Yeah, they're definitely going to be third generation at YSU. Um, so they, you know, I think that was a huge, but then um, in all my jobs, especially at the health department, it was that internship. Mm. And I remember when I did my internship, I did it more in city schools and the pregnancy prevention mm -hmm. uh, program. So that was back in those days. And um, I just wanted to give the students a really good experience. And mm -hmm. I thought health department would be the perfect place. So I, I can't tell you how many students I have had over the years. And I'm friends with a lot of them on Facebook and they're all over the country. I have some North Carolina, one is Montana. I have another a girl, uh, Macy Norty, she's up in Canada. I mean, so, and then I have students that, one of my, uh, our interns, uh, Nichelle, she's the health commissioner in Conneaut City. So mm -hmm. I mean like, I'll see like students out there. I'm like, oh my God, or, you know, and still to this day, always getting, you know, can you write me recommendation, this and that? And I said, absolutely. So we have always have interns. We have three right now from YSU. <laughs> uh, they were actually helping us today at our uh, testing site. They, they're just awesome. I just love, I love the students. I love being their mentor. I think they get a great experience at the health department. They go through all um, of the, you know, the different, they like to work in nursing. I'll tell you, they love doing environmental health. They love like going into restaurants and they, I feel like that's always one of their favorites. And I think they like getting out and kind of checking out the community. So, but right now they're busy, you know what I mean? We have them really busy with COVID-19. And I always tell them like, you guys are getting probably the best experience I've ever been able to give uh, interns because of this pandemic. Uh, we also, I work, work with AHEC and so we have students coming through um, doing, uh, you know, field experiences there and, just getting to, to know what a health department is. So um, we love that. And then uh, I look at really our connection. I look at you, Dr. Poe, you know, you and I are on a lot of, um, mm -hmm. a lot <laughs> I, feel of like, I feel like you're always the, the YSU connection, you know, because right. whenever I'm on any committee, they're always like, okay, we got to get YSU, we got to get YSU. And I'm always like, okay, Dr. Poe, you know, there's always the certain ones, you know, will come and, and be a part of it and give us your expertise. So um, I also have a really good relationship with, um, Angie Cameron, who's in human, Health and Human Services. So, I mean, we just yeah. have some really good good people here. And and I will say, just with the whole COVID, mm -hmm. so I can't tell you about, President Trestle has been wonderful through this whole thing. Mm -hmm. I remember like 10 years or eight years ago, I got invited to have like dinner at his house for something else, you know, mm -hmm. and I was like so excited. And now we have lunch there once a month because we're planning for COVID. I mean, he has been on it since the beginning and his team, um, with uh, Eddie Howard, I mean, we're just always together. Nicole Kent Strollo, mm -hmm. um, Julie Dental, we're just, they're, they're on it, we're on it. And we want it to be on the same page mm -hmm. and not have like, this is what the health department saying, this is what YSU is saying. Mm -hmm. And just from 
listening to other health commissioners and talking about other college campuses, they don't have the relationship that we do here. Like last week, I was, I was checking out the swimming and diving uh, team to make sure they could do it. Tomorrow I have to go for basketball. Mm -hmm. Football's already contacting me. So, I mean, they always go right to the health department. And they mm -hmm. could easily not, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. I feel like they truly have just taken this serious. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, I couldn't so, do it without why. <laughs> so you got me thinking about, like, you know, right now we're talking about COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, you know, how do we continue these relationships and these conversations? Because, you know, right now the hot topic is COVID-19. But there's so many other things. Yeah. Um, that are affecting our community right here in, in, in the city of Youngstown and thinking about how do we leverage these conversations mm -hmm. and these connections that we have, how do we maintain them, yeah. how do we sustain them beyond, you know, getting, you know, beyond the talks of COVID-19. Yeah. Although we, we will probably be talking <laughs> about COVID-19 for quite some time, right. but we also have to talk about some other issues that are happening here in the city of Youngstown. Yeah. So what are your thoughts about and your hopes there as, you relate, mm -hmm. as it relates to how do we maintain these partnerships? What do you need from the community to help the city of Youngstown continue to do the, work, the great work that you all are doing? Um, what do you need us to do? Yeah. So I think with that, um, I look at, you know, with Minority Health, mm -hmm. uh, our local office, we are very blessed to have Lee Green, who runs our local office mm -hmm. of Minority Health. I know you sit on her, on her advisory board. And she has so many things, so many great programs that she wants to do and mm -hmm. do. And right now, everything's pretty much been on hold because of COVID-19. Right. And then uh, we have our Reproductive Health and Wellness Clinic, who we're trying to get up under the direction of Anthea Mickens, another why she a graduate Yay. and uh, has her master's from here and her uh, nurse practitioner. So mm -hmm. we're trying to get up this clinic up and running and it's hard right now because of telehealth. And I mean, mm -hmm. there's just so much that we have that we want to do. Mm -hmm. But I think because of our partnership with COVID-19, mm -hmm. it's woken up people like, okay, the health department is a great player. Like mm -hmm. we can really work with them. I have always, relied on our community. I am very, we are very blessed here in Youngstown. We all know each other. I think that helps. You know, mm -hmm. you know someone who knows someone. And uh, we like crack up when we were, you know, today we're uh, Dr. Robin Woodbury and she's helping us out and everyone knew her because we were on her side of town on the east side. And so right. every single person, her mom, her dad, like her sister, you know, like we were cracking up. She pretty much knew every car. <laughs> and it's just funny because we all know each other when you when you're from Youngstown. And if you're an outsider, we, we, we accept you. We're happy we to have you. you. <laughs> um, and you can you can fit right in with us. But we just are lucky that way. We have always worked together. Mental health board, you know, with Dwayne Petrelli. So I'm just been lucky that I know I can at any time rely on any of those people. Um, but I really I'm blessed for the city of Youngstown. I mean, our family, I'd say the YCHD family, I know people always say my work family, they truly are. They, I mean, we have, you know, this is, we went through a tragedy together. This has been traumatic. Mm -hmm. And we have really all had each other's backs. And I think um, we're gonna be a lot stronger for it, uh, but it's been tough. And I look at our community, I look at the city of Youngstown, we couldn't be here without the leadership with uh, Mayor Brown and all of our other department heads. And then the, you know, the full uh, community that has just, whatever you need, Aaron, that, you know, they're always like, what can we do? What, how can we help you? And I think that has helped um, where we are today, you know, with COVID-19 and in general. So we've talked about a lot in this short period of time. We've talked, like, we could probably go on. And yeah, we probably about, could. You know, always worried about like, am I going to make the time? But yeah. <laughs> There's so much to talk about. Um, we were just thinking about how do we get the community engaged in you know what's happening yeah. how do we be the best servants to mm -hmm. the community and how most importantly we get the community involved in what's in what's happening here so you you've talked about so many things I'm just trying to think you know is there anything that you would like to say in closing to try to that we, we haven't talked about yet because we've yeah. talked about I, a lot I, of I, stuff I'm right <laughs> So yeah. I just want to make sure that you have an opportunity to have some closing remarks. But before you do that, mm -hmm. I think it's so important when we're talking about, you know, the role that YSU has played mm -hmm. in your career mm -hmm. and the role that um, a public health degree could play in um, our current students and other people's future degree. Can you talk a little bit about, like, what might be next, uh, what, you know, what potential future jobs might be coming up, mm -hmm. especially with, you know, um, contact tracing, yeah. um, perhaps when the vaccine come available, like right. what role might the health department play mm -hmm. at NYSU in helping with some of that? Yeah, that would be great. And I think about what's 
what's coming down. So we're starting the talks of planning for the, the mass vaccination, right. you know, and that's something that we have always done like little mock trials and now right. it's going to happen. Right. Uh, so we really are like kind of ahead of that. And I know we'll, we'll rely on YSU to have sites, you know what I mean? Are we going to do a max vaccination at the university? And we already have all those relationships set up. So it'll just be a phone call to, you know, President Trestle. It'll just be a part of our agenda, one of mm -hmm. our monthly meetings. So I'm not worried about that. I do, when you said contact tracing, YSU has stepped up and said, hey, we'll give you some students to help with that. Mm -hmm. You know, because we do see that a lot with the contact tracing is a lot of work. Yes. We have wonderful contact tracers. We've been able to get some through the Ohio Department of Health. And then some of our students, um, interns are doing some contact tracing. Uh, and they do, they, they, you know, they appreciate that uh, because it's hard, you know, when you're telling someone, I, I felt bad, the one girl, she had to call someone and the poor kid had a breakdown. Like he started crying because he was like a college kid. And he was scared. Like, what do I do? What do you mean? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They have a lot of questions. Right. So our contact tracers are so often like trying to talk someone down and this is what it means, you know, because right. I think people are just scared again, right. not knowing. Am I going to die? Yeah. They're like, what today, is this? <laughs> right now. Yeah. Right. So she, like we have to talk a lot of people down. Right. And then also people are very worried about well, I'm not gonna be able to go to work for you know 14 days right. what do I do right. so I will tell you we do have some cares money that we were got um, and we are we contracted out with Catholic Charities Regional Agency in my cap mm -hmm. um, with Sheila Triplett and uh, Nancy Voidis so they're gonna kind of take over that money we're gonna refer those to people so now when we tell them you got to take off work for two weeks and they're freaking out we'll be like we'll help you whether it's rent you know help you with your mortgage help you with some utility payments you need some food We'll be able to buy, get you some food, some cleaning supplies. Yeah. We'll be doing that. So that's helpful. I know YSU has been very helpful for their students. If they're in quarantine, they bring them food. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they do a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm really surprised that just how we just have to help people because at the end of the day, um, that's what we're here for. But I think too, just public health, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of jobs out there now, I think eventually. Um, and we just keep, I keep, you know, anything I find, I'm always, I have students that are, I'm always sending out information. If new jobs come about, health education jobs, I think that's important. Uh, but I will end with, I, can, I think we're getting close to the end. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I did my presentation in 07 to the students, I remember saying, I talked about the show Wicked, you know, Broadway. And I think of Broadway now closed until the summer, it breaks my heart, you know. Mm -hmm. I saw Wicked and the one song was for good. And um, it, it goes back to YSU really changed my life for good. And I mm -hmm. still go back to that when I'm here, when I look at all these pictures on the wall and how my life has changed for good because right. of Youngstown State. So this just about wraps up our time today. But I have to say thank you so much, yeah. Aaron Bishop, for <laughs> being a part of this alumni lecture series and sharing your experience of how you discovered public health, mm -hmm. your career path, and really talking about you know, what's happening within the city of Youngstown to deal with COVID-19 and stressing the importance of you know, community involvement. And we all have to work together in spite of um, <laughs> what's happening, you know, we all have to work together and that's so important. And so as we close out today, I wanna to say to everyone, thank you one for being a part of this um, great discussion about public health and where can we go next? What, you know, what does the future hold? But most importantly, I want you to consider this, that public health is every day, <laughs> everywhere and everybody. Thank you so much.